Hey Linux fans, Rob here. Welcome to Linux Quest and thank you for watching. Well, it's finally arrived. Ubuntu Mate 16.10. I for one have been excited to see this uh, uh, being released uh, officially. And I know that we've taken a look at betas and things like that in the past. But you know, I'm just, I get excited about Linux distros. So uh, just thought I would share kind of what's new. I know you can read this for yourself, but uh, you know this is part of what I enjoy doing, and uh, you know, and I want to cover some of the reasons why I call Ubuntu Mate the gold standard of uh, Ubuntu spins of uh, Ubuntu-based distributions. So I'll cover some of those, and I'll also probably go over most of the highlights of the OS and the UI and that kind of thing. Because if you're new to Linux, or perhaps you've never looked at Ubuntu Mate. Um, I'll cover some things there for you as well that will hopefully help you make a decision um, you know, as to whether this would be something you would want to try or not. So let's jump into some things. We'll get into the changes and things like that to begin with and what's been updated or fixed, etc. And then we'll uh, move on to the UI part of Ubuntu Mate and point out the things that really make it the, uh, the gold standard. All right, thanks. So let's jump, jump on over here. And um, we'll go through the list, and I've increased the font size, not because I'm getting old, just to make it easier to see on video. Um, so um, 1610, it's GTK3 plus all the way, baby. Um, now, I'm not going to pretend to know all of the benefit behind GTK3. Uh, I know that from a programming or development standpoint, I think there are some improvements improvements there that really help on that side of things and I believe that um, there's some added support there with X12 as opposed to X11 but again I'm not a developer or, or programmer or anything and really couldn't tell you all the reasons why moving everything to GTK3 uh, you know is, is such a huge benefit or what's the huge benefit behind it and would love to hear from you folks out there who know uh, you know the main reasons why it's a great thing but I am happy to see that it's not fragmented in that some things work with GTK3 while other things do not um, so when I read that it's all been moved to GTK3 I just felt like hey that's nothing but a good thing so um, I know this is something that's been a work in progress for quite some time so you know, that's going to be a really big point here for 16.10. And then we get through the list of what's changed since the 16.10 Beta 2 release. And uh, one of the things that stands out is it's been upgraded to the Mate Desktop version 1.16. And that is the entire Mate Desktop suite that has been upgraded. And apparently there have been many, many bug fixes, so as well as translation updates. The artwork for Mate has also been updated to 1610.9, and there are a lot of fixes listed here. And I'm not going to go through everything here. You can certainly read this for yourself. But fixes like uh, the Firefox download progress bars, uh, menu items in Firefox, um, icons, things like that, um, indicator applets, uh, transparent panels have all been fixed. So a pretty, uh, pretty good list of fixes there. And uh, then upgrade to Mate Welcome 1610.10. So they have uh, corrected the description of Adobe Flash, added keyboard navigation support. They have fixed broken images, things like that. Um, upgrade install packages have been fixed. And I believe one of the other major fixes, I believe I read somewhere that they fixed an issue where if you were uninstalling, uh, pre-installed software there could you know that there were issues with doing that previously in 1604 and shoot I don't see it here and it uh, just in reading some additional notes perhaps it wasn't on this page they talked about that 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 has been fixed so now you can go in without repercussion supposedly um, and uninstall the pre-installed application so that's a good thing um, many other fixes here, bug fixes including um, booting PowerPC, ISO on a Power Mac, 
Don't know how many people that applies to, but if it does, that's a good thing. Oh, and I skipped this, upgrade to Matei Doc Applet, uh, so it's now version 0.75. So application actions now have their own pop-up window, which can be disabled if required. So we may take a look at that. Window list now appear in response to a click on an application icon when it has more than one window open, so that's good as well as action list and window list colors now match the panel so uh, improvements there UI wise um, and, and uh, optional comp is integration to provide previews of an applications open windows as well as bug fixes so you know I'm, I'm not one to uh, nitpick or get into discussions about oh, okay that's not real that shouldn't be a version uh, number change. You just went in and, and made fixes. I, I think there's enough going on here, especially if we back up to the fact that everything has been moved over to GTK3, that that, that warrants 1610, and you may you know, want to argue that or whatever, and I understand that. That's fine. But uh, I, for one, am happy to see all the work that's gone into this, because again, I think this is the gold standard of Ubuntu spins. All right, so I'm going to jump into some of the reasons why I believe that it's you know the gold standard. And um, but before I do, I want to list. I want to just kind of throw out a couple of things. This is running kernel 4.8, and again the Mate desktop is 1.16. And um, so I, I and I'm not going to do this while I'm filming because it, it's not fair to do that because it uses more system resources. But I recorded the uh, memory usage uh, after a cold boot, and I expected really to see somewhere around 540 to maybe 600. So I was a little surprised to see it around 693 megabyte. Now, just to compare that uh, at cold boot with um, with um, Antergos. Um, KDE, which is now Plasma 5.8, which is really nice. In fact, I'm dual booting uh, my main system now with Antergos KDE 5.8 as well as now Ubuntu Mate 1610. But anyway, back to my point, I digress. At cold boot, I was getting somewhere in the neighborhood, and I'm going from memory now, but I think it was like 520, between 490 and 520. So I was surprised to see 693 here uh, after cold boot. Anyway, not going to get hung up on that. It's still very fast and very fluid. That was just something I wanted to, to note. And I was really happy to see kernel version 4.8 here as well. All right, so I've changed just a few things. I changed the desktop wallpaper because I love this. Whoever came up with this wallpaper, uh, kudos to you. I just I think it's so cool. It's kind of got that retro look, but... Uh, you know the old record player here but then they list all of the uh, distro information here on the album uh, itself so you know you got a distro number and you know the date that kind of thing so really cool idea there so I changed over to that and then I also changed uh, what you boot into by default so I'm going to start out by pointing out what you will see at launch which will be the welcome screen And this is one of the areas that is really stand out. So, you know, sure, there are many other welcome screens, but with this welcome screen, it's just so well done. And they, you know, details like highlighting what's really important, which is getting started, software, and of course, donate. Donate's always important when you're a developer. And that brings me to another just really standout feature. And the first time I saw this, I thought, wow, this really is setting the standard and that is the software boutique. Now I have already updated to the latest software listing. The first time, again, I'm gonna say it again, the first time I laid eyes on this, I thought, okay, so what do we have here? And, you know, was pretty quickly able to find my way around. And if you're new to this, and you ha this is the first time you're seeing this, you simply go up here to the row of icons, and you'll see there's a little pop-up there as you hover over. Um, and this will give you um, a list of various applications and really there are several things that make this really stand out the software boutique stand out the first thing you'll notice is that there is a fairly high quality list of applications set up here for one click install the other thing that you'll notice 
is that there is a good detailed description of what that application is or does. And that's important. If you're new to Linux, you may have you know, no clue whatsoever. In fact, I have no clue what Gobby is. So, you know, I'm finding out for the first time that it's an editor which allows one to edit text documents and source files, you know, over a network and blah, 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 so on and so forth. And I say new Linux user, but I'm going to back up on that because an experienced Linux user may discover here a piece of software that could be very helpful to them for the first time because they've taken the time to do such a nice job with listing the description of what the application does here and I may take the time to install it and just try it out simply because it's one click install so you know there's a lot of little things that really add up to be a big thing when you stop and think about it and I want to point out something else here if I can find it, here we go. All right, so on an application, if there is an equivalent that the, the user may be familiar with, they list equivalent to. So under NSYNC, which happens to be the, a, a tool that I use to sync with my uh, business Google Drive client, it says equivalent to Google Drive client and you know provides more details there. And then they even go on to say here, you will have to pay for it. So let me go into another area where they do a good job. All right, so here we go. Dark table, for example. Again, nice long description. Alternative to Adobe Lightroom. So you get the idea there. Here we go. Here's another one. Alternative to Microsoft Office Visio. So little details all add up to make this just a super impressive way to control your software. You've got a great list of uh, quality apps to choose from. It's great for a first time user who's not familiar with what all these applications are and what they do. It's great for anybody who uses Linux in general because it's one click install, one click uninstall. And I have had, uh, since I started the YouTube channel, I have had from various people, hey, how do you uninstall this? And, um, you know, that's not a question to take lightly because if you're not familiar with Linux, um, perhaps you just you know you you have no clue there maybe uh, you know you're used to uh, Android where you uh, click and hold and say remove and um, you know so anyway the other thing that's nice here is they provide additional software resources within the um, software boutique now I use synaptic package manager with uh, the exception of um, arch based distros where I, I use the AUR um, you know, with Pamac or Pac-Man. But anytime I'm on an Ubuntu-based distribution, I, you know, I always install Synaptic Package Manager. I appreciate what it does. Well, here it was a one-click install, you know, set up and ready to go. So, again, just, uh, I guess I've piled on enough praise for the uh, software boutique. But, again, that's one of the standout features there. Now, there's another thing built in, and, again, this is more, I want to say, UI and looks department. So if you go to Preferences under System, Preferences, Look and Feel, and then you go down to Mate Tweak. Now there you're going to see, first of all, Desktop, where you can choose to show desktop icons or turn that off, and then you can choose which desktop top icons um, you, you want to show. So here if we wanted to go and show Home, for example, then the next icon you have to choose from is interface so you can choose to show icons on menus buttons so on and so forth change the text where it's located but the nice nice part of Mate tweak here is the panel so now I have chosen Cupertino which puts this nice plank here at the bottom a la Mac style um, by default what you will see is Ubuntu uh, Mate and um, so that gives you a panel at the bottom and a panel at the top. Now you've got several other to, several other options here. So you've got uh, Redmond, if anyone can guess what that might be. Uh, then you have Fedora. Some of these are pretty close. You know, some of these don't change things drastically. Um, GNOME 2, and then Mutiny, which would be for Unity. It's their version of Unity. And so I'm going to go back to Cupertino, my favorite. And I just want to say, whoever came up with this idea, it's, again, it's one of those things where 
uh, once you get in and you see how easy it is to use you just really appreciate it for what it is and um, and it's again one of those features that I think make Ubuntu Mate the gold standard of Ubuntu based you know spins or distributions so the other thing I want to point out here is an able indicator so I'm going to toggle that off and give you an example of what that does for you so if I click on the volume icon I'm going to get a vertical slider and that's all you see at that point if I enable indicators it, uh, it adds more function to some of your taskbar um, icons up here so now we have a horizontal slider but now I have quick access to sound settings so um, that would be something that I would recommend that you um, toggle on and then you can also go in and change things like enable animations for performance adjustments window behavior things like that so those are two of the big features so the software boutique which is in the uh, welcome uh, screen if you will um, and then the uh, under look and feel again the Mate tweak there are several other things here that just make this number one I think a good distro for uh, first-time users to Linux but also people who have systems that aren't exactly state-of-the-art so if you're running a system that is um, let's say a uh, you know four gigs of RAM with a traditional hard drive and maybe you know an Intel uh, Pentium processor or excuse me a, um, an in, a slower Intel um, gosh I'm drawing a blank now a slower Intel processor um, Celeron thank you Cel Celeron processor um, then this would be something from a resource standpoint that would be something you would want to try now there are I just recently did a video on Zubuntu, Zubuntu, I got it right, uh, <laughs> that is also extremely light and I would say would be my choice number two if you've decided that you want to uh, go with an Ubuntu based distribution. Um, I would say Mate and Zubuntu should be your first two, especially if you have older hardware, um, you know, your system, if your system isn't, you know, uh, running 8 gigs of RAM and that kind of thing with an SSD drive for example then then certainly look at this and Zubuntu. The other thing I like that by default here was set up is you have applications, places, and system and um, I, I really really like this for what it does. Number one, anyone can find their way around this quickly. Number two, it's a straightforward um, list of your applications without really getting bogged down into seeing a lot of other controls or things like that while you're popping through but it's also extremely fast so you know very quick access <clears throat> now you've got a plank down there at the bottom and so the other thing that I appreciate about this is it makes it very easy to add uh, something to the plank so you can scroll down and uh, you can then um, do various things with that application. You can add it to the panel which will add it to the top. You can add this launcher to the desktop so then you would have a, an icon or a shortcut on the desktop and then you can also add this as a drawer to the panel or add this as a menu to the panel. So we're going to add it as a menu. Now when they say panel they're not talking about the plank. I'll go over that in just a minute. So we're going to come out of that and now you've got a menu for sound and video right here um, on your panel. So if you were, let's say, someone who edits video and audio and you have all of your applications installed here under sound and video and you just wanted one click quick access, it's right there. Now while we're doing this, I just realized something. We're going to bump this up for and that'll be just part of the video how we show you how to do that so you simply right click on the panel go to properties and now we're going to increase the size of this I'm going to bump it up there pretty good I just realized for video purposes that may be we're going to take her up to 48 we're going to get crazy with it alright so there we go so I'm going to close that out but that's again that's just some of the um, 
you know, some of the small detail, but it's a big thing. If this is something you access a lot, you've just got one click quick access to everything. Now the other thing that you can do, we're going to go ahead and we'll open up another application and we'll go to calculator. So you'll notice when you open an app, it will show up in your plank here at the bottom. Now let's say, okay, I'm going to use calculator, you know, 10 times a day. So I want very quick access. You'd simply right click on the icon and choose keep in dock. And now that, even if you close out the app, that will stay in your um, plank or dock there at the bottom. So um, again, just a, just a great, um, quick, easy access to, uh, great way to set up and have quick and easy access to your applications. Now, <clears throat> this is also configurable here on the bottom. So if you go to plank, uh, you've got some options here for the alignment, so we could shift that to the left or to the right, whatever works for you. You can uh, increase the icon size, so we're going to take this way up here. And I want you to look how uh, the aspect ratio and everything of these icons stays intact. I mean, they, they remain crisp, clear, and sharp, even though we have this thing scaled all the way up. So, um, you know, that's again some of the attention to detail in this OS that you do not see in other distributions. Um, icon zoom, that's something I, I remember someone asking, hey, how'd you get it to do that? So that's simple toggle of uh, icon zoom there. And now as you scroll over, you get that zoom effect, which is a very nice effect. I like that. So that's all under appearance. And then you have behavior. So you have Windows Dodge. You can auto hide and tele hide. Um, you know, Windows Dodge seems to work well. IntelliHide also works well. So IntelliHide will hide it when you launch a full screen application. But if you hover your icon, uh, or excuse me, if you hover your cursor to the bottom, uh, it'll then pop up so that you can use it. I'm going to keep it on Dodge. And then you have Docklets, which I've added the trash there. So you'll have, you know, quick access to your trash bin there to empty and keep things nice and clean but you could add Clippy uh, clock which is already there and desktop and uh, if you wanted to remove that you could simply just click and drag and it'll go poof and disappear there so it's pretty versatile I, I really like this setup it's my preferred setup so again if you're new here I just pointed out some things that I think make this again I'm gonna say it again the gold standard for Ubuntu based distributions and it also adds to just the overall usability um, of this distro. I mean, this is one of the most user-friendly distros um, that's Ubuntu-based. Um, and, and I'll add to that list is Ubuntu again. I, I, again, that's very user-friendly, easy to use. It's, you know, after spending more time with it, I, you know, I, I say Mate is number one for me, and then um, Zubuntu would be number two. But you know they're pretty close, so uh, just try them both out. Is what I suggest: try them both. We're, 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 you know, we're in the Linux world. You can just try them. So anyway, hope this helps. I know I've run on long here, but for me, this is a distribution that really deserves the attention that a lot of people give it, and rightfully so because it's just so well put together. And so I'm happy to see the updated kernel and all the other things, the GTK3 improvements and all the other things that come along with this. And again, just highly recommend that you give this a try if you're thinking about Linux. And this would be a distro too if you're just getting into it and you have lots of questions about it's got a really big user base. So I think you would find lots of help and support along the way. So uh, give it a shot. Well, I hope that helps and we will check you later.